When she walks by, great walls start to shake. She'll not control. We're all from um, a rock and roll background, I think, from when I was a little kid. You know, I'd be watching Top of the Pops in, in the 70s, and uh, it was all about fun and rock and roll. We felt that there was a void in rock and roll music, and we hoped to fill that gap. We spent most of the summer putting the album together, and the engineer advised us to go to a local studio where we had it mixed, and we went through the mix process and afterwards we, we weren't happy with it. We thought we'd put so much into it and we thought, you know, this is not going to stand up in, in the real world. So after about three sleepless nights, I actually said to my missus, who is the biggest mix engineer in the world? And it might sound ridiculous. It's probably a moment of madness. And we Googled who'd done the last ACDC album and it was Mike Fraser. So we went on to his website and just followed the cell number on the bottom and his PA woman answered and um, said, um, I explained the situation, she said, I'm in, in Calgary Airport in Canada and we're flying back to, to Vancouver, back to the studio and I'm with my friends at the moment and I explained exactly the predicament that we were in and that we put so much into this album and that we wanted someone that we felt confident could do it justice and she said tell you what send some rough mixes to my blackberry phone and that's what we did and when they arrived in in vancouver we got a text saying this is awesome from mike fraser himself and within three days lindsay jagger my missus negotiated with with mike fraser and he agreed to, to mix the album and it came back and it was what we expected it to do it was good new songs are more tailored to fit in the live environment and because we've already got the backbone and the foundation of an album we can tailor these songs uh, tuned for for the live for the live show mm. the more for the more for big the big sing-along songs these even though the one of the big rock and roll show they're great songs of course, yeah, these songs are, yeah. are more for the live, for the live, bigger, bigger the live. I, I would say the first album has a shape to it. There's three, uh, not styles, but avenues. The rock and roll type tracks, the Star Raver, Super Groover, and then there's the riff flavour in there, which is your shake, jam, um, what else? Yeah. The Studio 54, and then there's the, the balladish type tracks like Ocean of Kings, Hell to LA. Whereas with this new lot of songs, we're tailored, we're trying to just straightforward, rock straightforward and roll. Uh, rock and roll audience type pleasing songs. We are now trying to go further afield, and we're venturing into Japan, Europe, and then hopefully USA. I think there's a good market for for rock and roll music outside of the UK. We're looking forward to going out and taking it to a bigger stage, more people, just to be, just to expand a bit and just to give ourselves the room that we need in order to sort of purvey the message, to get it across, to just to get rock and roll back in the limelight. I'm Neil from The Jokers, come and have a great time with us because we always have a great time when we play. And don't forget the merchandise stall on the way out.